and a lecturer at the University of Nairobi. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for being here. A lot of questions. I think we're still trying to learn about this virus. Um, and of course, it really kind of came to the fore last year, November, December. And we haven't fully understood the impact or the magnitude of coronavirus. Um, but just for you to help us understand, we know that we get it from contact from surfaces or from getting too close to someone who might be infected. But just to understand how it behaves, there's, I want to show those graphics really quickly, if we can get those up, of how the virus, how long it lasts once it comes into contact with different surfaces. There you go. Um, so that's, of course, if someone coughs and how long it could probably last in the air. Is that correct? Yes, it is. It is correct. Okay, so it can stay in the air for about 45 minutes. Yes, uh, usually because they are droplets, they actually fall down much sooner. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if they were much smaller, they could last longer. Um, my best example would be uh, when someone sneezes and you can actually sometimes feel the droplets. Right. They don't last too long. But if you spray uh, like a fragrance in a room, you could come back um, hours later sometimes and still be able to smell it. So this is much smaller than what you'd see in the fragrance. So they drop mm -hmm. to the ground. Uh, much bigger, sorry, than what you would see with the fragrance, so they drop to the ground within minutes. As you can see, 45 minutes is proposed. Right. Of course, depending on humidity, temperature, and all that. So that also has an impact, depending on the climate around. Yes. Okay. Let's take a look at the other graphic in terms of now different kinds of surfaces and how long it is likely to last. Clothing, for instance, up to 12 hours. Well, this is information, I think, that has been drawn from similar viruses. Okay. Um, we haven't studied the current virus, COVID-19, on clothes. I've not seen any evidence of such a study. But um, yes, it, is, it can last on clothes. Whether it is a, a day or two, that is not very clear. Right. But yes, the most the practical lesson we can pick from this is that it can last. It can, it, it can survive on clothing for at least several hours. Okay, and there's other surfaces, wood, paper, glass, metal, if we can keep running those graphics up on the screen, plastic. They're saying several days, four to nine days in some cases. Yes. So when we're looking at glass, for instance, how many days is it likely to? Again, the evidence I've seen so far yeah. is only been on metal surfaces and a few other surfaces. Okay. Talking about three days, three hours to three days for the specific virus that we are dealing with. Right. For the other viruses that are similar to it, there have been more studies because they've been around for a while. Of course. And some of them can uh, sit around for even a week, depending on the surface. If you notice, some of the surfaces, like some of the metals, change temperature a lot when it's very cold and it's very hot. Right. So the virus finds that very hostile and it will die off. And what I would like to say is that a lot of these differences, whether it's two days or four days, is really academic. The practical lesson we should draw from it is that surfaces need to be cleaned. Right. In, in some instances, they actually need to be disinfected with bleach okay. so that if somebody touches them, they, us, they don't get contamination with the virus. Okay, so let's move away from uh, surfaces and, and other material to who is more susceptible? So if you do come in contact with a surface, with an individual who's infected, yes. what would make you more susceptible to contracting COVID-19? As we get into that, I would like to highlight that the bigger driver of transmission is actually close contact. contact so okay. when you are in close contact with someone and they sneeze or cough, the droplets could land on you. The surface is a possibility, but it's less, we are suspecting that it's causing lesser infections because of the nature ah, of our interactions. Okay. But yes, it could cause infection or transmission or spread, and that's why we're saying you clean it. But in terms of uh, susceptibility, right. everyone is susceptible. Everyone can get infected. So everybody should take precautions. The, the difference comes in how bad the disease gets okay and we're seeing that uh, for people with certain characteristics they are more likely to develop severe disease and these characteristics are related to age in many adults we've actually seen men are more likely to get severe disease than women right. but also people older than 60 years people with some underlying conditions like diseases chronic diseases of the heart chronic diseases of the lungs and the airways um, hypertension mm. diabetes cancer but the point is that these people are although they should take extra measures yeah. to avoid infection everybody is susceptible including children but susceptible to infection meaning everybody can get infection so we should all take care and for those who are with those risk factors then they should be taking extra measures, but most importantly, if they get infected, they need to be 
um, more care needs to be taken before they get into severe disease so that they are treated earlier right. than most other people. Let's talk about an item that has really gained popularity, masks. Yes. And people feeling that if I wear one, then I'll be able to at least block any kind of uh, infection. Um, I heard of a scenario where some people were cleaning the masks and reusing. Is that recommended at all? Not at all. I mean, uh, you should actually use... Um, uh, and the, the masks are actually for use by people who are sick. So if someone right. is sick, uh, you wear a mask to protect others around you. You don't want to walk around coughing and sneezing while releasing mm -hmm. these droplets. So if you're sick, you wear a mask. If you are taking care of the sick, so basically you're a healthcare worker. Right. Or somebody probably for some short time you need to get this person to help or hospital, you could wear a mask. Okay. But the general public is encouraged not to wear masks for one reason, actually two reasons. One is that they've not been shown to be effective in protecting you. Mm. In some instances, because you touch to adjust them, they actually predispose you. But also because right now we need them across the world, there is uh, likely to be a shortage if this is sustained. Right. So if we start using them where we don't need them, then where we really need them are the hospitals we will uh, get a, a problem. So for the sake of everyone, and this is what happened in Korea actually, they managed to do a very good job yeah. without necessarily using masks for everybody, okay. but for those who need them. So we should encourage people to take measures in preventing them, and we're focusing on the most effective measures rather than wearing masks, which is not one of the most effective. Okay, but if you fall in any of those categories where you do warrant wearing a mask, yes. um, there is one that you can reuse. Is it the N95? Well, even for N95, it should be changed about, after about four hours. Okay. So, and and um, I've not seen any material that can be re reused, meaning it can be disinfected yes. or sterilized and, and reused. And then reused, right. Yes, so unless we invent something because of the necessity that we, ca we, we could sterilize and reuse, but so far all are disposable. Okay. And that's why we need to save them for the healthcare workers at the front line okay. who are interacting with these patients. Let's talk about how the virus actually affects the body. We've seen several graphic stories about mild, moderate, yes. uh, severe, or even critical cases. Yes. Essentially, what does that mean when you're in different stages? Yes. Now, for most people, the COVID-19 will present as a mild or moderate illness, meaning they may have a cough, they may have tiredness, they may have um, fever. But in these instances, they will recover or they're likely to recover without any medical interventions. Okay. So for this, we say they are in a, they have mild to moderate disease. And this is about 8 out of 10 mm -hmm. people. Now, if you go further, there's likely to be the 2 out of 10 uh, or, or uh, say 5 or 4 20 out of 100 who are likely to have severe disease. And when we say you have severe disease, you are getting into breathing difficulties. Mm -hmm. So because this virus has now moved from the airways, uh, where it was causing a dry cough, into the lungs. Okay. And in the lungs, when it begins to attack the lungs, now the people will start developing uh, breathing difficulties, of course, pain while breathing, breathing difficulties. And so these people will require a bit more help in the hospital, mm -hmm. including oxygen therapy and other support. And a, a much smaller number out of the 20, maybe five, will actually get to critical mm -hmm. levels. Right. And the critical levels, um, I, I don't know how to say this simply, but there's something called septic shock, which is a, a really low blood pressure, mm -hmm. life-threateningly low blood pressure, um, failure of the lungs to oxygenate your body, um, failure of other organs, which could mean this person really has to be in ICU or they will die. But this is five out of a hundred people who are in critical state. And these are the people who require uh, ICU services and other high-tech uh, medical care. But for the general, uh, I mean for the majority, right. 80 in 100, yeah. uh, they get to recover without uh, having to require serious medical intervention. Okay. Although uh, in Kenya we are saying they need to be at hospital for isolation so that we take them out of circulation so they don't um, expose other people. Now earlier you mentioned that everyone is susceptible. Yes. Um, but are there some preventative or proactive measures someone can take maybe to build up their immune system? Um, in some cases I've seen people talk about getting a flu vaccine. Are any of those things effective? I'll start with the flu vaccine and, and then come to building immunity. Vaccines are excellent methods of building up your immune system. Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, the flu vaccine will not protect you from COVID-19, mm. but it will protect you from flu 
And and whenever you're, I mean, if you got infected with flu, it doesn't mean you can't get infected with COVID-19. Right. So if you don't get infected with flu, then you're better off. So it's okay to get the flu vaccine. It will protect you from influenza, but not COVID-19. Now, as to building immunity, the best ways we've seen, the most yeah. reliable ways of building your immunity is usual diet, healthy diet, fruits, vegetables, exercising, keeping your body fit, and, and avoiding stress. Of course, right mm -hmm. now, a lot of people are anxious and stressed. Right. So you need to deal with it in, in a healthy way, getting information from the right sources. And we've seen also as you exercise and eat healthy, sleep enough, your stress levels tend to be manageable. I know, of course, a lot of people asking about immune boosters. Yes. And the evidence so far does not show that these have any benefit because generally you and I are healthy. If yeah. you're healthy, these immune boosters tend to be vitamins. You already have the right vitamins, and your bodies are quite capable of storing this for months. So if you take your fruits, you actually extract these vitamins. You take your vegetables, extract these vitamins. Instead of spending money buying vitamins that you probably don't need because your body right. has enough, they would be useful, and sometimes we prescribe them for people who are undernourished, okay. either because of malnutrition or other reasons or some medical conditions. Right. Maybe in this era when people are indoors, we need to remember to go out and sleep, at least uh, bask in the sun for a few minutes in yeah. Day, because vitamin D is best uh, obtained that way rather than buying it over the counter. So I would say for those who are buying immune boosters, um, it's not what you need right now. You just need a healthy meal, fruits, vegetables, exercise, sleep, uh, sleep yeah. enough and avoid too much stress. And lastly, still on that uh, preventative uh you know, uh, string. When it comes to washing hands, we know soap and water is the best way of doing this. Yes. Um, however, we also see uh, sanitizer being an option. I've seen individuals talk about mixing aloe vera and surgical spirit. Yes. Making all kinds of concoctions. What is the most effective if you can't buy it in the store, for instance? As you said rightly, that the, the, the most effective way of cleaning your hands is soap and water. And I keep giving this example of somebody who has been either in the farm with, yeah. with visibly dirty hands or working in a garage with visibly greasy hands. Any sanitizer will not work. But where you can't get water and soap, a sanitizer comes in handy. And if you can't get in the shop, there have been uh, formulations proposed even by WHO as to mix. But I'm not sure the average person in the public will be able to measure because you don't have these measuring cylinders exactly. and all that. Because you have to ensure that the alcohol content in this mix or measure, um, concussion right. is at least 70% or thereabouts. It could be slightly lower, but 70% is most effective for this kind of virus. Okay. And so I would say um, stick to water and soap as much as possible. Right. And if you have to mix, then take uh, the caution to make sure you have the right ingredients right. and the right uh, proportions. Because if you don't, it will be for cosmetic. But you'll be using a lotion to, an expensive <laughs> lotion to... Which is not enhance. doing much for you. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Masika, for those insights and hopefully have given more clarity when it comes to combating uh, COVID-19. On that note, let's take a short break here on Citizen Weekend. Much more ahead. Stay with us. Thank you.